saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost and the mighty burning fire. I really praise God for this opportunity on tonight to minister to the saints of God. I praise God. I don't take it lightly. All of you all are important to me and you're God's children. So to be able to minister to you speaks volumes to me. <clears throat> Hold on one second, okay? We have uh, some guests that were invited, I was told last time, and they didn't know if they had an opportunity to speak. If we have any guests on here, I want to let you know that you are very welcome. I have a very special guest on here. Um, the young man that you mentioned in your prayers that the saints have been praying over, he's on the Zoom. And I just praise God for that. Praise God for you, Robert. I thank God that you were able to attend our Zoom. Is there anybody else that is a guest here on the Zoom on tonight? Hello, my name's Nick. I'm a guest. Hi, Nick. I am so glad that you're here. Welcome. Welcome, Thank welcome, you. welcome. I am so glad that you all are here. Is there anybody else that's a guest? Come on in. <laughs> so glad that you're on here. So without any further ado, um, Robert, did you want to say something before I move forward? Or are you good? Thumbs up. Good. Yeah, he's good. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead uh, without any further ado. I'm going to pray first, and then I'm going to move forward with the message. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to come before your presence. God, I thank you for a fresh anointing. I thank you for just blessing, touching, healing, and delivering thus far on this Zoom. The testimonies that we have heard are all to your glory, God, and we expect greater blessings and greater works than we've ever had or done before. We bind every hindering and blocking spirit that may hinder this word from going forth freely. And Lord, let the word rest and resonate in our hearts that we may not sin against you. In Jesus' name, amen. We had one other testimony. Um, I don't see her on here in the form of Mother Talbert. She was at our revival fire for the first Sunday night. And God has been doing amazing things in those revival fires. As you heard Elder Roberts, he received a refreshing refilling of the Holy Spirit. And he began to speak in new tongues as God gave him utterance. And also, um, Mother Talbert had been deaf in her ears for over 10 years. And the Lord opened up her ears. Um, at first, she started out with, you know, I believe I'm going to be able to hear. I believe, oh, there she is. I believe I'm going to be able to hear. I believe that I'm going to be able to uh, hear God speak. And all of a sudden, God opened her ears. And she said, I can hear, I can hear. God is truly amazing. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we are able to ask or think. And I just love God for everything that he's done, everything he's going to do. Give me one moment. I'm going right into the message. Okay, so my topic tonight is what is your purpose and what is your identity in Christ? And one of the main things that God has us to do um, when we come into his presence is to identify who he is first. He is our God. He is our father, right? That's who God is. Well, who is Jesus Christ? Well, Jesus is our brother. He is God's what? his son. He is also our friend. And so we're going to find out what our purpose, our identity is. A lot of times, you know, I've, I've met a lot of people that say, <clears throat> I don't know what my purpose is in this life. I don't know why I, um, why I'm even existing. I don't even know what I'm supposed to do. And a lot of people do things because they just do it out of instinct. They don't have an exact pattern a reason why they do what they do. But I want to let you know on tonight that once you accept Christ as your personal savior, you won't have to ask yourself that question anymore because when Christ comes into your life, he gives you a sure identity and everything that you ever want to know is in where? The word of God. So I used to walk around, I was that individual, like, what is my purpose? 
why am I here? Even on the jobs that I've had, I used to ask myself, well, God, why do you allow me to go through so many things? All of my colleagues that uh, were principals and were teachers, they didn't have any problems with anybody. I mean, they just coasted right on through. Life was just a can of peaches. You know, it just was beautiful for them. But for me, I was like Oprah all my life. I had to fight. You know, it just seemed like I was just constantly fighting. And I had a friend of mine that came to me, he's from Nigeria, and he said, there is no fight if you're not in the battle. And I'm like, what? He said, I just want to let you know, if you're not in the battle, you don't have to fight. I thought about that. I said, well, the difference between myself and the rest of them is I'm actually fighting for the Lord. I'm actually on the battlefield fending off demons while they're at ease in Zion, just relaxing, having a good old time. Why isn't the enemy bothering them? Because they're his friend and I'm a friend of God. So because I am a friend of God, I'm gonna be fighting because the enemy doesn't like the fact that you chose God over him. If you remember in the very beginning, what did Satan say he was gonna do? He said, I am going to take over the kingdom of heaven and they are going to worship me instead of worshiping God. Isn't, wasn't that his purpose? That was his purpose. He wanted everybody, all the heavenly hosts to worship him and not worship God. But even if you move further into the book of Job, after Satan was cast out of heaven, he didn't stop there. Let's start in Genesis. He even tempted Adam and Eve, right? So he knew that the word and the promise had been given to Adam. So guess what? I'm going to go to Eve. And haven't you figured out a lot of times when you figure out your purpose that I'm going to serve God, all of a sudden the people around you start acting a little funny. You notice that? Well, he got to Eve and couldn't get to Adam. So I'm going to mess with his wife. I can't get to you. So I'm going to mess with your friends. I can't get to you, so I'm going to mess with your boss. I'm going to mess with your supervisor. I can't get to you, so I'm going to mess with your family. I'm going to have them looking at you and treating you funny. That's what Satan does. But we, once we identify who we are in Christ, we recognize who he is and identify him for who he is, which is Satan. Our biggest mistake is oftentimes we see the devil rear up his ugly head and we are so angry at the individual that is being used by God mm -hmm. till we forget that it's the devil behind them, making them act that way. Mm -hmm. Can I get an amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. So the purpose, we got to know our identity. There are a lot of people in this world and in this time that are so confused about who they are. I don't know if I'm a woman. I don't know if I'm a man. I don't even mm -hmm. know if I'm a cat, dog. What am I? We had this woman that was on, uh, she was. She made the news because she wanted to sue uh, the veterinary services because they would not accept her cat. The doctor, the veteran, veterinarian doctor, the doctor that treats animals would not treat her cat. And so when he was brought before the courts and they asked him, well, why wouldn't you treat this woman's cat? He said, because her cat was a seven-year-old human being that I identified as a cat. We're in a time when people are so confused. And sometimes maybe it would have happened in your childhood, something that happened then, something happened traumatic in your adult life, something happened traumatic when you were a teen or preteen. Things happen to cause you to think a certain way. But my Bible says, that any man that is in Christ is a new creature. creation. You are a brand new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. So even if you were born that way, the Bible says you must be born again. You must be born again. And how can I be born again? Do I go back into my mom's womb and start all over that way? No, all you have to do is confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Jesus, I want you to be Lord of my life. I believe God the Father 
raised you from the dead, that you died on the cross for me so that your blood could flow into my body and change my DNA. And I believe that you rose again with all power in your hand. Just like you're going to raise me up from this affliction, from this sin that I'm in, that I can't seem to stop. Jesus Christ, I believe that you can save me. Come into my heart. And once you confess with your mouth that you sin and you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you're saved. You're a new creation. You're a new creation. You are new. <laughs> I like to say that your whole DNA has changed and I'm going to show you how. So, and I'm so used to teaching Bible study, I almost asked the question. So the first thing with your identity, you got to identify as someone who is like Christ. Now, there are a lot of people that say, I am a Christian, which means that I am of Christ or I'm like Christ. But can many people identify as being righteous? Can they identify as being saved, sanctified? That means you're saved. That means you, you may have been drowning in your sin, but somebody saved you. Sanctified, that means you're cleaned up that you're living, living a holy life. You don't have little snacks and knickknacks on the side that you're nibbling on um, in between Sundays. That's what it means to be sanctified. Not doing little things that you know are against God's word, against his commandment. You are not doing those things. So you are sanctified. You are holy. You're able to present yourself before God. <laughs> and Holy Ghost filled means that you have God's spirit inside of you. The Ephesians, the fourth chapter says that once you accept Christ as your savior, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption. That means no tampering. Nobody can open you up and sample a piece of you because you're sealed. You're protected. You're covered. And then Acts 2 tells us that we want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So how do we become filled with the Holy Spirit? Get in your word. Start reading your word. Start calling on Jesus. Find a place where you can find a secret place and say, Jesus, fill me. And he will fill you with his Holy Spirit. How will you know that you are filled? Mark 16, 16, 17, and 18 says, these signs follow those that believe. That's Mark, the 16th chapter, 16th verse, 17th and the 18th verse. These signs follow them that believe in my name. Will they cast out devils? So that means instead of looking at the individual as all confused, all messed up, crazy, cuckoo, mad, all of the things that you want to call them, you look at them as, uh-oh, that person has a demonic spirit in them that's making them act this way. And what do you do? You cast that devil out. You don't have to yell out, say it out of you. You don't have to do that. But in your mind, you begin to plead the blood of Jesus. That's why we worship God in spirit, and in truth, because a lot of times we want we can't say things physically because of the position that we're in. We may be at work or we may be on the battlefield or we may be at church or we may be in the grocery store where, where we would be ostracized if we yelled out. It wouldn't be presentable at that time to do that. But we can yell out in our spirit because God is a what? He's a spirit. He hears us. You can call on Jesus in your mind. And say, Jesus, whatever demon is in this person, making them act this way, I take authority over that demonic spirit because God has given you authority. You have to know your identity in Christ. When you know your identity in Christ, you don't allow the devil to just keep doing things. You don't allow him to keep doing things to aggravate you. You rebuke him and tell him where to go. Genesis 1 and 27 says that when we know our identity and our purpose in Christ, he says that we represent, we'll represent Christ. So a lot of people that say, I love the Lord. I'm a Christian. I won't do anything wrong. But as soon as you make them mad, they boop, bop, bop, boop, bop, bop, saying all kinds of things that are not like Christ. I love the Lord. I'm a Christian. I'm living for him. But as soon as something goes wrong, a storm comes in their life, they're self-medicating. I got to take something to make me feel better. Oh, I mean, I need a cigarette, man. I need this drink. I need to hit that. I need a little something to make me feel better. But when you are in Christ, when you truly are in Christ, you're going to represent holiness. 
You're going to represent him 100%. It's just like if somebody were to talk about your family member that you truly, truly love and they bring up their name. What you go? No, not my cousin. Not my sister. Not my brother. It's the same way with God. They talk about the God that you love. Not my God. Not my father. Not my father. Why? Because you are an ambassador for him. You're representing him. Genesis 1 and 27 says, so God created man in his own image. So you not only represent him by what you say, but you look like him. God created us male and female. So you are man and I'm a woman. We look like God. And guess what else? When people see you, they see God. I'm going to say that again. When people see you, they see God. And a lot of them are confused because they're like, wait a minute. They look like God, but they sure aren't acting like him. The Bible says that ye are, you yes. ye are our epistle. Please mute. Ye are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read of all men. Second Corinthians, the third chapter and the second verse. So we are read and known of all men. When they see us, they are reading the Bible. They know us as God's child. What happened to Peter? They said, oh, you sound kind of like a disciple, like you've been around Jesus. If we've been around Jesus, we should sound like him. Ah, uh, your language is, you just sound like Jesus. And what did Peter do? <clears throat> I'm going to prove to you that I'm not a disciple. And he began to do what? He began to curse. That's what he began to do. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. So despite what the enemy is trying to do in your life, because you represent God, God's going to bring you to an expected end. You have a fixed fight. You're going to win because you look like God, because you are God's, and because he is thinking of you, you win. I used to say this all the time. I got this from Bishop Bradford. Devil, you lose, I win the end. When it gets really hard on me, I say it again. Devil, you lose, I win the end. Because Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, because I'm representing God, he is thinking about me. Hallelujah. You have a purpose. Everything was predestined for you. If you don't know your purpose in God, let me tell you more. Here's your purpose and identity. Matthew 10 and 42, King James Version. Matthew 10 and 42 says, Then Jesus summoned his, then, and when he called unto him his 12 disciples, I apologize, Matthew 10 and 11. Matthew 10 and 11. And when he called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits. When that fine looking man comes up to you, and he's saying all the right things, and you see that unclean spirit in him, what should you do? Should you get angry at him? No. You pray for him that those unclean spirits can come out of him. When you see that beautiful woman coming up to you, saying all the right things to you, what should you do? Get mad at her? I'm living for the Lord. I can't talk to you. No. You pray for her and cast those unclean spirits out of her so that she can represent Christ too. It says... He gave them power. You have power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases. If somebody has cancer, if they have high blood pressure, if they have low blood pressure, if they are anemic, if they have AIDS, if they have HPV, if they have an STD or STI, if they are blind, if they are deaf, if they are lame, if they are maimed, whatever it is, God can heal them through you. Why? Because Jesus gave you an identity as an ambassador of God. You represent all of heaven. So what did Jesus do in honor of his father? He healed the sick. He raised the dead. And you know, a lot of people talk about these things, but they never experience them. We have, we've seen people drop dead right there in our service. And we began to call on Jesus Christ. And we began to call on God 
the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And what happened to that individual that dropped dead? I mean, we had a licensed registered nurse in our congregation that ran up to the young lady and she was not a believer at the time. And she said, there is no pulse. We've got to call 911. My dad got off of that pulpit. He said, no, we're going to call on Dr. Jesus first because he created her. And see, oftentimes we begin to think about the creation. We think about the doctors because they know this or that. And I'm not against doctors, but who created you? Who has the final say? There's a song that says, who has the final say? Jehovah has the final say. God, Jehovah Rapha. God, my healer. He said he is the God that heals me. And he said there is nothing too hard for him. Not life, not death, nothing is too hard for God. As an ambassador for Christ, you can lay hands on that individual and they shall recover. Hallelujah. Man. You have work to do. You have work to do. Your identity should help you to realize that you're not like everyone else. Many times people are going to reject you. They're going to act funny towards you. They're going to make things hard for you. They're going to have things to say about you. Or you may walk in and they just stop talking. That is the worst feeling ever. I can tell you. When you walk in and everybody's talking and then all of a sudden the smile stop and they just stop. Well, why is this, Adrian? What is the problem, YA? Why are they doing this? Why do people seem like they reject me? They ostracize me. They, they don't have time for me. They're treating me funny. What is going on? One of two things. Number one, maybe you need to pray more. Maybe you need to fast more if you are representing God. Or number two, which is, it says, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, it says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. So they recognize that something about them is different. What is it? Well, God has made you new through his son, Jesus Christ. You're not going to be like everybody else. He says, old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And the, there's a scripture in the Bible. I have to find it. And it's in Proverbs. It says, when a man ceases from strife, every fool will be meddling. What does that mean? What does that mean, Y.A.? What does that mean? It means that when they find out that you've decided that I'm no longer going to live a life of sin, I'm changing the way I do things. I'm changing my attitude. I'm no longer going to smoke, drink, do drugs, mess with all these women, mess with all these men. I'm no longer going to lie, cheat, steal. I'm no longer going to pretend that I'm something that I'm not. I'm going to walk in my truth. What is it about them? So let me tempt you. Every fool will be meddling. Let me, let me just say something. Let me push, 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 push their buttons. I'm going to keep pushing. I'm going to keep pushing Laverne. I'm going to keep pushing her. And then when Laverne finally says, I told you about it. See, I told you. I told you they wasn't different. But when you have Christ on the inside, God always gives you a do-over. My mom used to always say, if you don't pass the test right the first time, you get to go through it again. And the Bible says every day is a brand new dawning. It's a brand new beginning for us. Every day, God gives us brand new mercy every single day. So if you messed up the first time, put your suit back on, suit back up, and try it again until you get it right. That's the difference between us and everybody else who don't, who doesn't, who, they don't care. They're sitting at ease in Zion. It doesn't matter to them whether God is, is happy with them or not. It doesn't matter to them whether they're in God's perfect will. But because you are a new creation, you're a new creature, old things are passed away, you're going to keep trying until you get everything in you brand new. And the more you try, the more you give God permission to clean you up and clean up everything in you that's not like God. The more you keep praising God, the more you keep thanking him, the more you fill yourself with his word, you fill yourself with positive music, you fill yourself with his anointing, you surround yourself around people that believe like you. And if you can't find two or three people, you find that one, God will send you somebody who will pray you through and let you know, okay, I got this, I can do this. So Ezekiel eleven nineteen 19 says, I'm sorry, um, 
2 Corinthians 5 and 21 says, for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So when Satan, the accuser, that's what Satan means, comes to you and says, you're not even righteous. You have the scripture to battle him with. Oh, yes, I am. Second Corinthians 5 and 21 says, I am the righteousness of God because Jesus died for me. His blood runs through my body. I have all new DNA in me. I have the blood of Jesus Christ, which means the sickness that was in me before I got saved, it can't stay in there because my body is the temple for the Holy Spirit. That's what the word of God says. Ezekiel eleven nineteen 19 says, and I will give them one heart and I will put a new spirit and I'm almost done within you. <clears throat> Some of, I've, I've found people that gave their life to Christ, excuse me, that say, I can't understand why I'm so sensitive now. It just seems like I cry all the time. Like I didn't cry before. My heart was just, you know, I could just control it. But when Jesus puts a brand new heart, when he allows, when God, the father allows his son to put a new heart in you, that, that heart of stone, it says within you. And I will take the stony heart out of their flesh and will give them a heart of flesh. So when you are in sin, your heart is hard. You don't care about anything but you and what pleases you and what makes you happy and what you want to do with your life. But God, through his son, Jesus Christ, replaces that stony heart and gives you a heart of flesh. You are a new creation. You know your purpose. You know what you are supposed to do. First Peter says, 2 and 9, says, but you are a chosen generation. You're chosen by God. A royal priesthood. You are priestly now, which means you can pray through to heaven and God will hear you. A holy nation. People are looking at you and say, oh, you're like all those other people that love God. A peculiar people. You're different. Something's different about you. That you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Something about when you come into the light of God, you are no longer in darkness. You're brand new. You see things differently. You can hear God speak to you. You have the wisdom of God. John 15 and 15 says, we are even friends of Jesus Christ when we accept him in our heart. It says, herefore I call you not servants, for a servant knoweth not what his Lord does. But I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my father, I've made known unto you. Jesus is letting us know, John 15 and 15, he is letting us know that whatever he knows, we know. Isn't that amazing? There is nothing hidden in heaven from us except for when Jesus is coming back. And only God the Father knows that. <clears throat> so we are connected. When you know who you are, you have an identity, you know you're connected. No matter what, people have been really, really messing with me on my job. But a young man that I don't even rarely talk to just walked past me. He said, Hmm, seems like you've been having a pretty hard time. I haven't been seeing you much in the office. I used to get stay in my office for a long time. Now I'm all over the place. And he said, don't worry. They can't touch you. You connected. <laughs> Excuse me. Have you ever heard of people that try to get in the club? They can't get in there. But then when they find somebody that's in the band, all of a sudden they can go in with them because they're connected to them. You can get back to stage passes because you're connected to the artist. You know what I'm saying? So you are connected to God. You got backstage passes. You can go places no one else can go. You can do things no one else can do. Doors that are locked for everybody else will fling wide open for you. Why? Because according to John 15 and 15, everybody say, I'm connected. Thank you. Number 10, God knows us. When you know your identity, because you know who you are, God knows who you are too. He knows us. There's a scripture in the Bible that says, he's going to say to some people, I don't know you. But when you are connected to God, excuse me, When you are connected to God, he recognizes you as his son. I don't know if you all have ever seen the movie, The Wedding Singer, 
where he would just go in. I mean, the wedding crasher, where he would just go on various weddings and pretend like he was the family member and enjoy all the food and the feast. That is not possible in the kingdom. If you are not written in the book, Lamb's Book of Life, you cannot enter the kingdom. You can't crash through those pearly gates. I don't care who you know. If you don't know God and you don't know his son, Jesus Christ, you're not invited. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Peace. Ooh. Anyway, Psalms 139 39 and 1. Psalm 139 and 1 says, we belong to him. Oh, Lord, thou hast searched me and know me. God knows you. Isaiah 43 and 1 says, but now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not. Don't fear people. Don't fear what they say they're going to do. They can't touch you. Why? Because you what? Connected. Yes. For I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. We're God's property. Wow. And as the little baby says, no touchy. <laughs> Psalms 8 and 14 and 15. And this is my last verse. It says, for as many are led by God, by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. We belong to God. Man. We belong to him. Yes. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but don't fear. Somebody on here has been having problems after problem after problem with people messing with you. Prophetically, God is saying, don't fear. He's saying, don't fear. But ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Everybody say, Abba. Abba. Father. Father. Didn't that feel good? Yes. Now stretch your hands out in a form of worship. Stretch your hands straight out in front of you and say, Abba. Abba. Father. <laughs> Yada. That's extending your hands. It's a form of worship. Toda. Lift up your hands and you say, Abba. Father. Abba. Father. Do you feel that connection? Yes. Thank Isn't you. Isn't that amazing? Hallelujah. <laughs> Oh, wonderful. He lets us know he is a very present help in the time of trouble. Yes. In the time of trouble, he promised to hide us. We are loved by God. Don't yes. you ever for one moment think in your mind that God does not love you. Don't you ever for one moment think in your mind that God is angry at you, that he has rejected you or pushed you away. God loves you. He yes. is rejecting the sin and pushing that sin away. And yes. how can we get close to God? Get connected. Yes. Find your identity. Know who you are in him. And tell that old ugly devil, I belong to God. I know who I am. I'm only going to live for him. I no longer want to serve you or be a slave to sin because that's what it is when you can't stop what you're doing and you just feel like, God, I keep trying. I keep messing up. You are a slave to sin, but you can be free. I am telling you right now, you can be free in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. All you have to do is say, Father, Abba, Father, and extend wow. your hands. And yeah. as you put your hands, guess what? God's going to touch your hand as yeah. you touch him. Yes. Hallelujah. God oh. is real. He is real. He is real. There is no battery in us helping us to breathe in and out. There is no battery in our brains helping us to think. We are divinely created by our creator. And he has the final say. I don't care what the doctor says. I've seen people be healed of AIDS. I've seen people be healed of, of sexually transmitted diseases. I've seen people be healed of lupus and blood disorder, muscular dystrophy. I've seen people who were paralyzed and couldn't move, necks broken. Y'all heard the lady's testimony. She's got the doctor's records to prove it. Spine broke, not just a neck, spine. And she can move her arms. Let, I wish she would show herself. She can move her arms. She can move her legs. She can turn around. She just was testifying. God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. All we have to do is ask him or think about what we want him to do. That's all. 
God said, I'll do it. He said, I'll do it. All we have to do is ask. So, Father God, I come to you right now in yes. the name of Jesus Christ yes, as Lord. the Holy Spirit is moving. I ask that you touch everyone on this Zoom that yes. has a special need right now. Meet yes, them right Lord. where they are. We bind every demonic yes, Lord. the devil that comes to bring doubt and yes. tell them I don't know who I am. The devil is a liar. You yes. are identified as a son or a daughter of Christ. Yes, Lord. You are identified as his chosen peculiar yes. generation. You are identified as the righteousness yes. of God. You are identified as a royal yes, priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Yes. You are identified with God. And yes. Lord, thank you for the identity. We bind Satan on every hand that comes to snatch the word yes. out of our heart. But we hide the word in our hearts that we yes. might not sin against God. Yes, in the Lord. name of Jesus. In the name pray. of Jesus. And everybody say amen. Amen.